Lord, to give us, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us today, and Lord, that you use me in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Yeah. You guys can sit down. And that was just... <laughs> um, today, I wanted to talk about a message about, I call it pride, pride and position. What's pride in Spanish? Orgullo. Orgullo. All right, when I, when I say pride sometimes and I point to one of you guys, just yell it out. All right, so it's pride and position. Uh, I wanted us to look at the story of the kings in the Bible. In the Bible, there was monarchs. There was actual kings, like as you see in England, like the Queen of England. But they were all kings in, in Bible times. And one thing that the kings always struggled with was pride, which is in Spanish is... Orgullo. Orgullo. Pride. And we see it everywhere in our lives. How many of you guys have children here? Kids? Yeah? All right. Uh, do you guys start to see them have pride already, if they're old enough? You start to see kids be like, you tell them, don't do this. And then they just look at you. They're like, they wait till you turn around, and then they go do the thing that you told them not to do. Right? Because they think, ah, this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't boss me around. I'm, I'm the captain of my own ship. I do whatever I want. But I decide what I do with my life, this guy, this parent. But uh, we tend to think of kings as being very prideful. When you think of a king, you think of him having a lot of pride. Well, you know what? The Bible says that by us, by Jesus' uh, sacrifice, we are kings and priests. How many of you guys have ever given your heart to God, given your heart to Jesus? If you have, then, then you, and by, by virtue of the Bible, are considered a king and a priest. Now, in order for you to be a king and a priest, to be a good one, you have to figure out what the other ones did bad so we can learn from them. Every, uh, every one of us is to be appointed as king. You know, I wanted to talk about uh, King Azariah. He was 16 years of age when he, he, when he became king. Imagine working for a king that was 16. I'm pretty sure the, the castle was all full of uh, Nintendos, all full of big toys. Maybe they had like a basketball court in there. I don't know, but for a 16-year-old, he probably, to be king, that, that was probably a lot. So he didn't know what to do. He started off asking God to help him out. And he started off real humble. He started off seeking God. And you know what? The, the key to his success as a king is he seek God, and God will provide. God will bless him. Slowly but surely, God kept on giving him more, more power, more fame. He went into battles. He fought, and he won. He gained all his victory. He gained everything. For a king... Man, if you can choose any position in the world, you probably say, man, I want to be a king. I have servants, I have uh, women, I have power, I have everything that you want. Everyone wants to be me. There's no one higher than me. But you know what? Even a king has to give, uh, give uh, explanations to God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a king. It doesn't matter if you're the lowliest of lows. Every single one of us has to give an account to God for our own lives. And so, this king, he started off real good, but, you know that single word in the Bible, but, you should always be afraid of that, because uh, the word but is, is uh, what separates the saved from the unsaved. Oh man, I want to give my heart to the Lord, but, you know what, uh, I, I just can't do it right now, I'm young, oh, I, I want to serve God, but, my job doesn't let me. You know what, I, I want to do, uh, I, I really want to start going to church, but I can't wake up early enough. You know, that's what separates the safe from the lost. It's the ones that do God's will that are make it to the kingdom of heaven. The ones that listen to God. And it's not that hard for us to listen to God. So this king, he started off real good. He started getting power, victory. He had all this material. He had all this fame. But he started slowly to forget all about God. He started to no longer care about the things of God. He decided, you know what, I don't, I don't want any, uh, I, I don't need God. I'm the one who created this. Look at this masterpiece. Look at this castle. Look at this, this people that serve me. Me, 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 me. He was all thinking about himself. He even got a sacrifice, uh, and he, he did it wrongly because he didn't care. Because in the Bible, there was uh, certain people that were only allowed to do sacrifices. And this king says, eh, forget what God says, I'll do it my way. I'm the king. No one, no one tells me what to do. I can do whatever I want. And so, right there, they told the king, king, you're wrong. You can't, you can't sacrifice this animal. Only the priest can sacrifice this animal. And so they tell him, and you know what? When you tell someone uh, what they're doing wrong, what do you think normally happens? 
You normally get angry. I don't know about you. Have you ever told someone something that they're doing wrong? And the only thing that they do is just get angry at you. Like, nah, I can do whatever. You know who I am? You know what? The heart, our hearts are like that. When we have pride, we tend to be like that. If someone tells us something wrong and, and we know we're doing it bad, we're like, nah, you tend to not listen. You get angry, like, eh, it's just okay. How about you come here and do it better? But you know what? Uh, the, the, heart of, the heart of man is full of pride, guys. So he had an option when he was doing the sacrifice. He told him, don't do it. And then, they, and then he had two options, either to realize that what he was doing was wrong or to continue on being mad. So he took two options. And what he decided to do was do the sacrifice anyway. He killed an animal. And at that very moment when he was talking to the priest, yelling, they're like, I'm king, I can do whatever I want. The Bible says that at that moment he started to get leprosy. He started to get a sickness. And they started to see it in his face. I've seen people who've gotten angry, their whole face has changed. But never have I seen something where someone's whole skin changes. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says that he, he began to be sick because he just realized what he did was foolish. He started to forget about God. You know what? There's a big temptation of being a, a person in power. You know, in, in, when you're a person of power, you tend to think, you know what, some rules don't apply to me. And uh, I'll give you an example. You know, Congress here in the United States, they make all these laws and all these taxes, and they don't even have to follow it. They, they designed it where they're excused from it. Man, once they found that out, I got a little mad. I'm a little prideful. I'm like, what? Uh, they, they, don't play, they don't pay certain taxes as we do. They, they manipulated it. You know, to being in power, you think, oh, man, I could just manipulate a few things. When it comes to the things of God, do you think God wants us to make it more easier for ourselves? Or does He want us to live by an example? God says, let your light shine. You know, for many of us, that's hard to do. Because we think, man, Isaac, man, you preach, you, uh, you preach at church, you preach at things. You know what? Because you do so good, you, you can help yourself to some sin right here. We, we, we tend to think it's a scale. But no, God calls us for a higher purpose. We must choose to be humble. Because this is one thing that uh, all these kings had trouble with. To be humble is a choice. Yeah, uh, you, uh, God never says, I'll give you humbleness. It's a choice. You have to choose to be humble. You have to choose to soften your heart. It doesn't come in as a pill or something. It doesn't come in as uh, something you can take every four hours. Humbleness doesn't work that way. It's a choice. You know, Jesus stepped down from His glory, from His kingdom, to be the sacrifice as a human for us. To have the clean be cleansed and switch with the unclean. To give us life. Because pride is what causes us to never ask for forgiveness. You have trouble with your family, you have trouble with your spouse or your loved ones. Man, you'll stay angry with them, you'll forget what you're angry about, but you'll never apologize. You know why? You have pride in your heart. You say, man, no, what I, I, I know I did wrong, but I'm not going to ask for forgiveness. You're crazy. You see what my dad did to me? You see what my mom did to me? You see what my family did to me? My friends? Oh, this lady, I'm a guy loca. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask for forgiveness from her. I don't know your life. Uh, sometimes my mom drives me crazy, but that's my own personal story. But I still love my mom. And every time when she offends me, uh, I always forgive her. I tend to, I, I tend to always choose to forgive. Because, you know what? Lucifer, the devil, being prideful, was kicked out of heaven for, for being prideful. Don't think just because uh, you're going in prideful, you'll, you'll stay there. You know what? If you're prideful now, man, the Bible says that you won't make it to heaven. Because God saves the humble. God, in His Word, He says, and I shall save the humble. From that, we can tend to think, you know what? God won't save the prideful. The ones who only uh, say, me, 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 me. But um, we have a choice. You can be a king, and, and you can either choose to learn from these kings, not to be so prideful. The message is here. The message is so clear today. I have it written down for you guys. And this is my last uh, point. It says, if you accept Jesus' word, you will be accepted as a king. If you deny Jesus' word, you will be denied as a king. So the choice is up to you guys. If you guys are battling, you guys have been hearing this word for so long and some of you guys don't even, uh, haven't given your hearts to God, what are you waiting for? So many of you guys say, bah, but I have so many things in your life. You know what? The Bible says if you, uh, if you follow Jesus, you are a king. And don't let anyone take your crown because the Bible says at the end of it, to those who will stand, I will give them the crown of everlasting life. 
Uh, do you know that promise of salvation? Hold on to it. And how they say it in Spanish, I love the way they say it in Spanish. Uh, they say, No dejas que nadie te roba tu corona. And, and that's the message that I want to leave you guys today. We can all just bow our heads and listen to Israel. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, Lord, for us being here, Lord, another day that you brought us safe and sound. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this word, God, Lord. May uh, these words come straight from you, Heavenly Father, and may it penetrate our heart, and may we feel it every single day. Help us to walk in you, Heavenly Father. Help us to make good decisions to deny ourselves and put you as King, Heavenly Father, Lord, so that we may be lifted up, Heavenly Father. Lord, I, I declare everyone who is here, God, to be protected, and that their words and their lives be changed by your word. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. 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 You guys are good to do it.